Okay, this is the title of my talk. First of all, uh, I'd like to say that I come from the sensors group at the University of Rome, Tor, Tor Vergata, where we, I, have, I, I am at the Department of Electronic Engineering, and in the same group, we have people at the Department of Chemistry giving us the possibility to control both the electronic, the technological part, and the chemical synthesis. This is the outline of this talk. I will start to say something about the, the porphyrins, that is the molecules that we are, use, that, that we are using to uh, develop chemical sensors and what kind of sensors we can do, we can do with porphyrins. And then we see uh, something about the possibility of porphyrin to, uh, to self-assemble in supramolecular order stru structure and how this struct uh, what kind of uh, chemical sensitivity these structures brings to the to the, to the sensors, and in particular to optical sensors. We see some examples such as, for instance, porphyrin nano, nanotubes and the chemical sensitivity of large uh, scale ordered porphyrin la la layers as detected by uh, reflectance anisotropy spectroscopy. Uh, few words about chemical sensors. Basically, a chemical sensor is a, a double, uh, let's say it is b based on the sensitive uh, uh, properties of a molecule, like in this case a cavitan, that can selectivity bind with an ethanol. But in order to have a sensor, we have to take into consideration some physical quantity that uh, is ch changes uh, uh, as a consequence of this uh, interaction, and then to measure any of this physical quantity with a basic de device that at the end is something that can be connected in an electronic circuit. And uh, in our uh, approach to chemical sensors uh, started more than 10 years ago, and we, uh, we are working about the property of porphyrins, and porphyrins are known molecules uh, in biology. They, are, they play uh, important roles uh, in uh, in the mammalians, for instance, the transport of oxygen in blood in the hemoglobin protein is ruled by a porphyrin, and also the energy, uh, the, uh, the, let's say, the um, light harvest energy in, uh, in plants uh, with chlorophylls. And in particular, por por porphyrins are also quite suitable to develop, uh, as we see something, uh, artificial, artificial olfaction systems. Uh, what, a, uh, how a porf uh, what is the structure of the, of the porphyrin and what we can do with this kind of, uh, of molecules? So we, can, uh, we can ask, uh, we can take, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an advice from uh, Julius Caesar and to, to describe that a porphyrin is done be basically by three, three main parts. The first part is the, is the aromatic, si the aromatic uh, system. The second part uh, is the metal ion that can be complexed at the center of this aromatic system, forming the so-called metalloporphyrin system. And then, more important, this uh, part, uh, this uh, structure can be, can be modified, adding uh, lateral functional units. And all these uh, systems, this, uh, uh, let, let's say, complex molecule, has uh, <coughs> a number of different, of different, uh, uh, different chemical Interaction you can establish a number of chemical of different chemical interaction with gas mo molecules that can be driven, for instance, by hydrogen, hydrogen bond, or uh, hydrophobic inter interaction or uh, aromatic uh, interaction, and even coordination when the metal is complex at, at the center. So these uh, large, let, let's say, these possibilities that are also that, that are all contained in one in one molecule can be exploited to fabricate a chemical sensors basically to make this uh, interaction for instance porphyrin with an alcohol onto onto basic devi devices and in the in the years we developed some of these uh, for instance with the quartz microbalances we developed uh, uh, artificial electron uh, artificial olfaction systems uh, or we measure uh, multispectroscopy in a number of different porphyrins and see what is the, sen the, the sensitivity, or also functionalize the gate of a, of a field effect tra tra transistor. What is interesting is that each of these applications, even if the porphyrin is still the same, but changing the, tra the tra tra transducers, you, we get at the end sensors with different properties. And this is rather interesting in the, in the development of chemical sensors. Uh, but going to the, uh, to the topic of this uh, talk, and <clears throat> we observe that uh, uh, 
it is rather well known that the, the chemical versatility of porphyrins can also be used as, a, as, a, as a, let's say, to, to, to drive self-assembling of porphyrins into, into order structures, let's say something like roads or, or nanoporous solids where the, the structure of the solid is well de determined, for instance, in this case, by hydrogen bond. And uh, we, are, we have been inter interested in studying the sensitivity of this arrangement in order to, to investigate if particular arrangement of porphyrin can provide additional sensitivity mechanism to the molecule. Because with the sensors that we have seen before, basically what happens a single molecule is transferred to the largest ensemble of molecules onto the sensor. What happens if, if, if it's possible to add add the sensing properties, uh, for instance, uh, using supramolecular arrangement. And I'll give you some, uh, some, example, some examples of this. For instance, uh, this is, uh, 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 let's say, a functional ingestion of, po of uh, porphyrin with uh, an ion in this uh, position in order to drive, uh, let's say, aromatic pi pi and, uh, and uh, uh, cation inter interaction. This porphyrin uh, spontaneously assembling uh, in aqueous environment, it is uh, uh, dissolved in ethanol, but changing, let's say, uh, adding water, let's say, this, uh, this molecule, due to the hydro hydrophobic uh, part in this side, tend to, to uh, let's say, to aggregate one each other, but the, the cation interaction tend to give uh, a shift to the, uh, to the, let's say, to the arrangement. And it gives a very, in, very nice, very interesting, le, let's say, arrangement because these shifts uh, arrange the, the porphyrin in a, in a road structure. And this structure, as they grow, start to interact one each other, form a, a sort of barrel like structure, like, like this, that can be also seen. And uh, this, uh, this uh, arrangement is very, uh, let's say, what is uh, interesting is that uh, the fluorescent of porphyrin is maintained even at the, at the solid state and uh, uh, we find that uh, the fluorescence is, uh, is uh, uh, let's say, can be modulated, for instance, in liquid by the interaction with the, heavy, with the heavy ions and in particular in this case there is a very good selectivity to, to mercury ion but a very low, let, let's say, response uh, to other kind of ions. You see that in presence of mercury ion, the fluorescence, this is the emission spectra, is, 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 is let's say, quenched. And the system is also reversible, so bringing back to water, it's, let's say, removing the hydrogen ion, we, can, we go back, let's say, with the fluorescence. So this is an example, let, let's say, of a property that is added by the, let's say, by the, the, uh, the uh, supramolecular structure between porphyrins. Another interesting, uh, interesting let's say, uh, uh, structure is the nanotube. And even in this case, uh, uh, we can, we can uh, uh, assemble uh, two different porphyrins with endowed with different, uh, with different ionic char charge. This is a free base porphyrins with uh, minus two total charge. And this is a thin porphyrin with a plus four. And uh, in, uh, in, in water, the structure self-assemble in a nanotubular structure like this. And in this image, it is possible to see this uh, structure with the inner cavity inside. And uh, uh, there is a, a very uh, simple way to uh, monitor the formation of uh, nanotubes uh, through, the, through their spectrum. This is the, spec the, uh, the um, optical absorbance spectrum of the, uh, the two, let's say, precursors, the two porphyrins. And one, the nanotube is formed. The spectra, the spectra of the, nano, the, the nanotube is different. This is a very interesting, let's say, uh, way to and very easy to monitor the formation of the nano of the nanotube. And what happens is that uh, the the sensitivity of this structure, for instance, uh, to uh, to ions uh, in a sol solution, appears even if the two precursors are practically not sensitive to the ions. For instance, this is the case of lead. And uh, we have uh, the optical spectra does not change when uh, we have a leading sol solution, and uh, <clears throat> we have uh, we have changes. So we have a sensitivity of the nanotubes uh, to the to the presence uh, of leads, but also to the presence of organics in solution, like for instance amines. 
and this is a this is a rather rather int interesting and what we are actually measure we are, what we are actually measuring here is uh, not uh, the direct uh, inter interaction for instance of triethylamine with the, with the single porphyrins, but how the triethylamine affects the formation of nanotube, mo modulating the forces that keep nanotube together. And uh, we try to transfer this uh, to a solid state, and when nanotubes are transferred uh, in solid state, uh, let's say including them, uh, for instance, in a polymeric mat matrix, we observe that uh, the, the, the nanotube uh, structure is uh, preserved. And uh, even if the nanotube is perhaps uh, flattened, but the nanotube, uh, the, the structure is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is still on, as it can be observed by optics, by the spectroscopy. Uh, uh, in order to measure the changes, uh, for instance, of the optical properties of these, uh, of these things, in this case, we have applied, uh, let's say, a, a, a technique of tra tra transduction that we are developing since a few years in cooperation with colleagues in Sweden. And uh, in this, it is just the use of, uh, of uh, computer peripherals uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, tools to probe the optical properties of uh, ma ma materials. Basically using a computer monitor as a, a light source, a programmable light source, and a simple webcam as a de detector. As the, uh, as the, let's say, the color changes for at, which co at each color we have a blend of wavelengths that is formed, let's say, by the uh, composition of the different, uh, of, the, of, the three, uh, of the three uh, basic colors. And we can, uh, we can measure then with the webcam where we have, uh, again, the decomposition of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the light in three channels, the red, blue, and green. This gives us the opportunity to develop very simple uh, sensors just uh, using computer peripherals. This is just a, a simple plastic substrate with spots of porphyrins, and here there is only the plastic and the mirror just to connect, to optically connect the camera with the screen. It can be seen that uh, this system preserve a, large, a part of the optical properties. For instance, uh, this is the optical uh, uh, tra tra transmission as measured by uh, a spectroscopy, uh, tra transmission versus wavelength, and uh, with this system we have a sort of a tra tra transmission fingerprint where we have uh, a signal that is the ratio between the signal read through the sample and divided by the signal through the reference, like in a normal spectroscopy, but uh, the uh, variable is no more the wavelength, but is the color. That is basically a mix of, wa of wavelength. And uh, mm, we made uh, a number of applications with this system. We are working with this system just to develop uh, very simple sensors that can be, for instance, uh, implemented in a, in a cell phone, where both uh, camera and digital video and, uh, and video are present. This is the tra tra transduction of uh, uh, carbon nanotubes, uh, uh, sorry, of porphyrin nanotubes with this, uh, with this system. And uh, here we have the spots uh, as seen by the camera. And uh, what we can measure is the spectra exposing, uh, is this fingerprint exposing uh, the structure to nitrogen and nitrogen added with the triethylamine, for instance. And we have, uh, let's say, the, uh, we have signals that are variable are different according to the to the different vapors, and we can see here in this typical principal component analysis plots the recognition of the of the individual of the individual va va vapors. <coughs> so, nanotubes include uh, uh, um, increases uh, uh, expands the uh, the sensitivity pro property of porphyrins, and we can read this uh, with a simple let's say arrangement. Now let's go to the to uh, very quickly to uh, let's say to large scale order systems. For instance, something like that uh, provided by Langemir Blodgett uh, technique. In the Langemir Blodgett technique, we can uh, force the assembling of porphyrins. Let's say squeezing the porphyrin on water if they are are uh, have a sufficient uh, let's have a sufficient um, hydrophobicity hydrophobicity. 
properties and then they can be tra tra transferred onto a substrate, onto a solid sub su substrate. So the self-assembling is uh, driven by the mechanical force applied to the, to the <coughs> molecules on the water. And uh, we can, uh, let, let, let's say, appreciate the, uh, the order that is established, for instance, with uh, uh, reflectance anisotropy spectroscopy. This is also, this is a technique measuring the surface uh, anisotropy. Let's say uh, uh, optical uh, uh, anis uh, anisotropy. It consists uh, in illuminating a surface of a sample with the light that is uh, switched in two orthogonal directions, the polarization of which is switched in two orthogonal uh, dire di directions. And basically, the measure consists uh, in measuring the differences uh, in reflected light when the light hits the surface at uh, two different uh, polarization directions. And uh, we have uh, studied uh, the application of this uh, technique to porphyry layers, and we have seen that it is possible for the, with, this, uh, with this technique to follow the growth of ordered, of ordered structure onto substrates, onto solid sub, su substrate, and we have very, inter very nice, let's say, correlation uh, with the number, let's say, of, uh, of layers and with the orders of them. And uh, there is also a theoretical, a theoretical explanation by uh, uh, Mendoza uh, <coughs> of, uh, of, our, of our experiment, just demonstrating that uh, there is this combination of thickness and, uh, and, uh, and order. We have seen that this system is, uh, rather, is sensitive to, that this measurement is sensitive to uh, the absorption of molecule into the porphyrin layer. And uh, this is not, uh, not, very, uh, not very surprising because, for instance, if we absorb ethanol, we know that the porphyrin changes the, the absorbance spectra. And then uh, these structures are derived from the original spectra of the, of the porphyrins. So we can look, in, for instance, at one fixed wavelength that corresponds to the largest, uh, let's say, absorbance bands in porphyrins. We can follow the absorption and desorption process uh, in the molecule. Less, uh, um, and uh, what we see, this is a more recent uh, re 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 results, uh, is that uh, if we see how the spectra, the reflectance uh, uh, anisotropy spectra changes, uh, we see very similar stru structure when compounds, uh, ana uh, analytes like, uh, for instance, amine and ethanol that are coordinated by the central metal of the porphyrin uh, uh, are, uh, let, let's say, are absorbed in the molecule. Less, uh, let, let's say, trivial, is the detection of non-coordinating -co compound, for instance, like uh, uh, nitrocarbon. This is the hexane. In this case, uh, the, the, there is no change in the optical properties of porphyrins because uh, this molecule does, the, does not combine directly with the porphyrin, but uh, it changes the, mor the mor morphology of the film. And this is very interesting because uh, this is a, a, a rather unique opportunity to, m to measure the different, different interactions, because we can then distinguish between coordinating compounds for which the porphyrin is a specific from non-coordinating compounds for which the porphyrin is not a spe specific. And in sensors, this is a rather interesting aspect. And just finishing, uh, just mentioning uh, uh, this other, this other uh, let, let's say, uh, opportunity, this other uh, uh, application, the functionalization of porphyrin clusters uh, of carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes uh, are, have been investigated for uh, sensing for their sensing pr pr properties, but they are rather unselective. It's just, uh, let's say, carbon. So it's uh, rather, they are rather in, uh, 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 unselective. One of the points is how to transfer, to increase, uh, to provide the selectivity to this uh, device preserving their, their conductance properties. And uh, here we have uh, nanoclusters of porphyrins deposited on a network of carbon nanotubes. And uh, we see, again, in this uh, principal component analysis plot, uh, uh, we can see this, uh, uh, we can read this plot saying that, that carbon, nanotube functional, uh, carbon nanotubes functionalized with porphyrins have a completely different selectivity pattern with respect to the, to the uh, uh, bare carbon na nanotubes. So this is also a very interesting opportunity to, uh, uh, to use, uh, let's say, porphyrin to functionalize uh, 
a device. So, in conclusion, uh, we say that uh, the supramolecular arrangement of porphyrins provides additional properties, se se sensitivity properties, that can be exploited for sensing purpose. These sensors can uh, be very simple, as we have seen just using familiar equipment, such as computer monitors and webcams, and in many, many cases, this is enough to get, uh, to, to get uh, let's say, important analytical properties. And uh, uh, we have also seen that more sophisticated techniques that at the moment are quite far from, the, from a device, uh, device application, but uh, we'll see, we are working uh, also on this, uh, 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 can provide, uh, let's say, uh, a separation between a core spe specific and unspecific, uh, let's say, uh, interaction that is important to increase the selectivity. And finally, with the porphyrin, with nanocluster of porphyrins, we can provide selectivity and sensitive either to devices as a fat or a conductive uh, substrate like carbon nanotube. Acknowledgements to the chemical part of my group, uh, that's uh, very important, of course, in these studies, and to the people at the University of Linköping, Gemar Lundström, for this uh, work on this computer screen uh, technology and for the RAS measurement to uh, Goletti and Estima at the University of Rome and Michele Penza at the NEA for the CNT. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Corrado. This is, uh, I found very interesting. I have a few questions, but before I leave the, the, the possibility to the people from the audience to make comments or Corrado, uh, is, is it possible to miniaturize the, the RAS, make it portable? It's uh, possible, but uh, let, uh, let's say every time you miniat miniaturize a system, you lose something. So it's important to understand what we are going to lose here. Basically, the heart of the system is this photo, the, the, is the photoacoustic, the piezoelectric uh, mo modulator. But uh, let's say we are, uh, we are seeing what happens, for instance, using less efficient, less efficient polarization switcher. Uh, the technique is very, is very interesting, but uh, let's say everything can be mini miniaturized in principle. But uh, at the moment, in order to preserve the sensitivity of the system, uh, this is the point. Because uh, here we can have a very high frequency of mod modulation. We are in range of uh, 100 kilohertz, mm -hmm. the, mod the, the modulation. Mm -hmm. So this is the critical part. Any more comments or questions? I have you. I have a couple. Uh, with the porphyrins uh, used as a detectors in liquid phase of, uh, of uh, metal ions, heavy metal atoms, uh, how much is a selective uh, method? I mean, uh, how you can, can you really distinguish between different uh, metal atoms? Well, the porphyrin uh, is not a, se a selective, uh, is not selective in, prin in principle. As we have seen here, there are, at the same time, many, many different uh, interactions. So the porphyrin is a, very, is a very good candidate for arrays, just because we have many variables and we can modify porphyrins and then we can have an, an, an array. So we can, add, we, we can have a sort of combinatorial okay. uh, selectivity with, with porphyrins. There are very, uh, for instance, in the case of uh, uh, carbon monoxide, there is a very high sensitivity to, of the porphyrin and we can have sensors highly sensitive. So there are very specific, very few cases where this, uh, this uh, sensitivity can be, can be high. But uh, the principle is just to, to put many porphyrins together, many sensors together in order to have a combinatorial selectivity just because of this uh, situation. <coughs> Yeah, and, and the next question, then I leave the word to other people. Uh, when you use the, you, you talked about clusters of porphyrins attached to uh, the, the nanotubes, to the carbon nanotubes. 
so how critical is the size of these clusters and how they are interconnected with the nanotubes? Is direct reactivity, I mean, you, you form bonds or is just uh, this, sort of... A okay. Mm, we, did not, we, have not, uh, uh, we have not created bonds. Let's say this is just, a, this is just in my opinion, physics option because yeah. uh, they have just... A That's what I thought. Sprite. Yeah. So this means that, uh, uh, in principle, there is, a, a, is something like a field effect, uh, a field effect. So let's say there is not a, di a direct char tra charge, uh, charge tra 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 transfer between the porphyrin and the... But uh, this is uh, something like a field effect. And we know that porphyrin has, a, for instance, in the field effect device, uh, the works uh, right quite, quite well. The porphyrin, for instance, has a very small uh, electric dipole because it's a rather symmetric molecule, but uh, when it absorbs something, the electric dipole changes, in particular with the co coordination. Yeah. And in this case, we expect a very large uh, sensitivity to, for instance, uh, for all coordinating species like nitrogen uh, oxide yeah. or carbon monoxide. Yeah. Fabio, another question? There is a question there too. I retained my put in the question because you did not directly touch, but I have a, a curiosity that uh, I would like to, to put your attention. Uh, one, uh, I work in the aeronautic. One of the problems we have in aeronautic is the formation of ice. Formation of ice is, uh, of course, preceded by the, uh, 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 the capturing of, a, of a surfaces, particularly the, the, the aerodynamic surfaces of water. And yeah, I see that one of the potential interests would be in the hydrophobicity characteristic. Is uh, uh, considering which are the normal structures that we use, that could be uh, composite structures and organic matrix-based structures. Is that uh, an approach that could be followed? I mean, the utilization of a functionalization with both the carbon nanotubes clustered with the, uh, uh, porphyrins in order to control the, uh, uh, the capturing of water molecules considering the polarity of the, of the water. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting uh, observation, thank you. Um, actually, porphyrins, anyway, have a, uh, many porphyrins have also a good, uh, let's say, uh, sensitivity to water. So it's true that the structure is uh, hydrophobic, but some parts of the molecule can be let's say, hydrophilic. So in many cases, we can, we can, we can modulate this, uh, this part. So this is a very interesting, never thought to this, but it's a very interesting suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions or comments? Yeah, Fabio. Have you tried the sensors uh, with explosives? Uh. It's not, uh, it's not easy. We tried the uh, sensors. Uh, okay, uh, if you expose the sensor to the vapor of uh, TNT, for instance, or simulants of other things, you, you get a response. This is not, uh, this is not uh, complicated. So it means that uh, if you want to measure the presence of uh, explosives when they are uh, evidently present, this is not a big problem. The problem of uh, explosive and ordnance in general is that they are concealed by something else. And in this case, uh, it becomes very, very complicated. It's just the needle uh, in a hexa. So this, is, this makes complicated. There, there, is a, uh, there is a sensitivity to explosive vapors because basically uh, trinitrotoluene, uh, you know, is a molecule is, well, well trinitrotoluene is not very volatile, but dinitrotoluene, for instance, is very, uh, it reacts very well with porphyrins. But uh, the point is that it is concealed, it is a very low quantity with respect to the rest. And usually, <laughs> you know, so if you want to, con to control an ordinance, uh, let's say, um, storage, this is something that, that can be done. But if you want to, to screen if uh, something is, uh, is uh, hidden in a luggage or something like that, uh, so where somebody don't want to that you, that you find it, 
So uh, it becomes complicated with a sensor like this. Okay, if there aren't any more questions or comments, I'd like to thank again Professor thank Di Natale.